Okay, starting um, here, you have collected your data, you've used Desmos or paper to draw your graph, you've described the association and clustering, and then now you're reflecting. So our hypothesis was a little off because we said that 21 milliliters would be the biggest circumference. So we thought this was gonna be our highest and we were almost correct, but this one over here um, is just a little bit higher. I think it went from 28 to 28.5. So it's just a little further up. And so our hypothesis was a little wrong, um, but I almost wonder if there wasn't user errors um, if we, like, maybe we would have got the same results if we, or maybe we'd got different results if we would have tried again. Um, like, did they really drop off after 21 except for the last one? Um, so maybe it's an outlier and not the two in between. So like what I'm saying is maybe this one was the outlier and you would see that this would drop off pretty quickly. So um, maybe I would want to run this experiment again. Um, and I'm using data that um, was done before. Oh, yeah. Okay, I paused so you didn't have to hear the announcements, and I actually do not remember what I was saying. So I'm wondering if maybe this isn't the outlier and that this doesn't drop off. So um, I'm using data from a previous, like from last year, so I can make this video for those of you who are ready. Um, and so I'm very curious on how yours turns out if you, if your class used vinegar um, to change. So then, um, how will you use these results to get your best reaction for your final product? What changes will you make? Well, again, so you're going to reflect on yours. Um, I think I personally, if this were me, um, I would want to try doing 21 and 29 again, just to see what happens if I had the same person, person doing the measuring. So yeah, I would like to try those again um, to see which one gives us the best result for our final product video. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm curious to see what you guys come up with this year. Um, if you have a line of best fit, you'll draw it. If not, you come see Burns to do this part. If you need to watch, there's a video linked right here. Um, it will show you how to do it on Desmos, but I'll just type it in real quick here as well. So here's the data. You're going to hit plus an expression and your formula is you're going to type in Y1 and I just hit one. I didn't have to like, hit any other button. Then you're going to hit that button. Um, is it called a tilde? Is that right? I don't know. And then M, X, 1, plus B. Um, and then what that's going to do is that's going to show you your line of best fit. Um, and you'll see, like, it goes through a couple of the points. Um, and then, well, that doesn't, that's not a point. So it goes through one point. Um, it has some above and some below. Um, and so that's what you would do. The cool part about doing this with Desmos is you would also have, it tells you what your M and your B are. Um, so that's kind of cool. So then I used, I rounded to the nearest tenth, um, but I used my slope and my y-intercept that they gave me. And then I remembered my equation is y equals mx plus b. Um, I also, you can either copy your thing here, or if you come up here and add it, like, that's fine too, Wh whatever works for you. Um, but the important part is, is that you have your line of best fit because that's what you're trying to find the equation of. Um, if you need help finding an equation of a line, if you drew it on paper, uh, remember B is your y-intercept, it's your beginning point where x is zero, and then your M is your slope. So it tells you how many you go up and how many you go over to get to the next point. A lot of times it's a fraction, which is way easier um, to find than it would be as a decimal. But since I use Desmos, that's why I have a decimal. Then, um, what would be the best amount of responding variable? Well, based on our data, we would want to use uh, the 28.5 or the, um, or yeah, the circumference. I'm sorry. The, the biggest circumference we had was 28.5. So now we're going to use our line of best fit to predict that. So you have your equation and your responding variable is your y. So we're plugging in y and we're gonna solve for x. So you're gonna solve it as a system, solve it as an equation. So where you're getting the constants on one side, variables on the other, and then here at the end, that's time. So you do the opposite, which is divide. Um, and then, so it's, our answer would be 47.7 based on our trend line, our line of best fit. Um, but when we look at the graph here, so here's how we do that. Um, 
here I can't really see, but 47.7, like that's where, like that's where this is going to land. Um, and so to get a 28.5 circ centimeter circumference, our line would say 47.7 um, milliliters of vinegar. Um, but we know, and we'll talk about this down here, that that doesn't necessarily make sense. It only makes sense mathematically. Um, and it really shows how there are errors in these measuring, um, in the way we measure here. Um, some of your ex experiments, you won't see any correlation or any like linear association. Um, and so this will definitely be wrong for you, but it's good practice, so I still want you to do it. Um, give ingredients and procedures to get the best reaction, um, blah, blah, blah. The big thing is I'm going to use the 21 milliliters because this 28.5 was so far off that, like, I know that it was wrong. Um, explain the science, blah, blah, blah. Rap can help you. But my only thought, again, is there were some measuring errors because if you think about what happened, each group measured um, or did it their sel yourselves and then you collected the data as a group or as a class. So I think probably the problem is more in the, um, the user error. Okay, I know this is getting long, but we're almost done, so I'm just going to keep it in the same video. Um, describe how you're going to connect your chemical reaction to your developmental as asset. You have already talked about this. In your step five, your human reaction research, you really dove into this and that how part of how you're going to connect these two. So I'm going to say something like, the bigger the balloon, the more positive of an outlook, outlook that you would have on your future. You can get this by, um, that should be feeling, F-I-L-L, -L. sorry about that. Um, now I have three L's. Filling your balloon with things like plans, goals, and dreams, but don't get too many because then it can become overwhelming. So maybe you try like smart goals. Um, and then I would expect yours to be way more researched than this, but this is just an example for you to have the ideas. Um, so smart goals are specific, measurable, attainable, something I forget, and timely. And so that is like, this is where you're going to like put in those tips that you have at the end of your human reaction research um, and how you're gonna tie the two together. So it'll be very evident when you're typing this in that, hey, the bigger the balloon, the more positive outlook you have on your future, but there becomes a point that you can put so many good things in there that it doesn't work anymore. So if you overstress and overthink about your future, you can miss out. Um, so we're gonna do a CAPS lesson for our final product. Um, and we're going to talk about how to use SMART goals to prepare for the future. Um, the more goals of planning you put in your balloon, the bigger, brighter your future. But don't get too overwhelmed and focus on the future because too much makes your balloon not as big and full as it would. Um, and so then you're, you're going to finish your presentation, something that will call us to action or make us want to continue to support your project. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to start my presentation with asking rhetorical questions about your future, and then I'm going to end it asking a question to get everyone really thinking like, oh, yeah, to where hopefully um, you can continue to like have this call to action to improve yourself as a person or thinking about it as a project, like what's going to keep us driving um, to think that you've you got it. So um, hopefully that helps. I am sorry that it was super long, but it is a pretty big assignment. That's why you get a week to do it during work time. So um, good luck. Please reach out with any questions.